welcome back. In our last video, we went over how to add images to our application, both from the SF Symbols app, which is like a database of stock images that we get from Xcode, and also from our assets folder. So I added these two comments, which uh, you guys could as well if you want to. I'm gonna try to take more notes throughout this bootcamp, just so you guys can have that for reference if you ever come back and look at this stuff. So I added this note here that images from SF symbols use image with the system name constructor. And then the images from our assets folder, we just pass in a string that matches up with the name of the image in our assets folder. So in this video, guys, we are gonna be getting started with stacks. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in our Swift UI bootcamp directory by command shift N. And we are gonna say stacks and we're gonna move this guy down to the bottom. And we are gonna create a new Swift UI view and we're gonna call this stacks module, same as always. So the best way for me to show you guys what a stack is, is to just go ahead and show you what it looks like in the code and then we can sort of break it down further. So imagine that we wanted to add another text below this text or a shape below that text or an image below that text, right? How would we do that? Well, you guys might think, okay, well maybe I could just go here and say like text, uh, hello, bootcamp, right? And you guys will notice that nothing shows up, but if you look at the top of your canvas here, you notice that it creates an entirely separate preview that has the text for Hello Bootcamp. So that's not what we want, right? We want these two things to be together on the same screen, and to accomplish that, we're gonna use a stack. So guys, go ahead and highlight this stuff and hit Command X to cut it, and then you're gonna create something called a VStack. And just take a look at the autocomplete window. You're gonna see it's a view that arranges its subviews in a vertical line. So we can think of this VStack as a container. And anything we place inside of this VStack, like these two text components, will be contained within that stack and they will be stacked in a vertical line, right? So we can see here that these two things are now stacked on top of each other. So that's pretty cool and it's so, so simple to get views uh, stacked in this orientation by using something like a VStack, right? And you guys can put any combination of view components on within the stack that you want. So for example, I could go here and create a rectangle, dot fill, say it's like pink or orange maybe, and then we can say dot frame width and height of maybe 200 by 100. And you guys will notice that that rectangle shows up right underneath my text component. And it's important to note here, guys, that things at the top of the stack container show up first or show up at the top and then everything that you place below it shows, uh, shows up beneath that thing. So if I were to take this rectangle and put it above my text component, it would automatically rearrange my view so that the rectangle shows up on top of the text. So these, uh, the way that we see things in the code uh, in terms of the order that they appear or mimic how they will actually appear on screen in terms of where they get stacked in the order of the vertical stack. So let's just go ahead and dive into a couple different types of stacks here, guys. So let me go ahead and just uh, make this like my rectangle and maybe give this a different color. Let's do pink and blue for fun. And then let's maybe give them a corner radius on each one. Of 10 so that's a vertical stack right there so how would we want to stack things maybe next to each other right in terms maybe horizontally well you guys could go ahead and, and copy these two things and let's go ahead and comment this out and let's make an H stack and you guys will notice that it stacks those things horizontally or next to each other and we could adjust the frame of this Let's maybe make these guys squares, right? And we can see here that they show up right next to each other, which is super, super cool. So SwiftUI makes it really, really easy to arrange things, guys. And we can also nest stacks within each other. So I can, for example, put H stacks inside of V stacks and vice versa. But there is one more type of stack that I wanna show you guys before we move forward. So let's just go ahead and copy all this code, comment it out. And let's go ahead and make this a Z stack. So before we do, let's go ahead and read the documentation for this. So this is a view that overlays its subviews, aligning them in both axes. So that's just a fancy way of saying 
this is a stack that we can use to put things physically on top of each other. So V stacks and H stacks work within sort of a two dimensional coordinate space. You can imagine a Z stack as being a three dimensional coordinate space where we can sort of stack things on top of each other. Now it's not actually gonna be 3D, it's all gonna fit within the plane of the two dimensional phone screen, but you can sort of imagine that as your third dimension. So you guys will notice that right now, we can't really tell that things are stacked on top of each other, right? And that's actually because this blue rectangle is just covering this pink rectangle. So if I wanted to make this guy, let's say 200 by 200, you'll notice something interesting, right? That this uh, rectangle in pink is on the bottom of the stack and then this rectangle in blue is placed on top of that. So that's how Z stacks work, guys. They place things or overlay things on top of each other. And the way they work in terms of the order that things are placed within the stack is that the things that show up at the top are the uh, sort of base elements. And then everything that you put after that will get stacked on top of the previous thing. So another example I could do here is making another rectangle and let's make this one purple and then make, maybe make it like 50 by 50. And you guys will see that that gets stacked on top of the blue, which is on top of the pink, right? So you guys can get a feel for sort of the order of things there. So uh, we can add some notes here if you want, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I do want to show you guys a couple different uh, properties of stacks now and sort of how we can customize these things. So let's comment this out and let's go ahead and go back to our V stack here, guys, and comment that back in. So we have our vertically stacked list of components here. And once again, the things that show up on top of the V stack show up first and then everything gets put below that. And I forgot to mention guys with the H stack, everything that shows up at the top, uh, we, we move from left to right. So everything that is put in the beginning of the stack starts at the left and then everything that put is placed below that in the code starts to be placed to the right of that previous element. So, um, that's a really basic introduction to stacks. Now, like I said, let's go ahead and go over how we can customize them a little bit more. So um, guys, how do we space out the, uh, or increase or decrease the spacing between our two elements? You guys can see here that we have this sort of default spacing. It looks like it's about four pixels. So I can open up some parentheses on my V stack and you'll see a couple different um, options here. So let's look at spacing. And I could say like 32. And go ahead and just tab over to content, guys. You can literally hit the tab key and just delete that. We already have our content here. This is the content of the stack. And you guys will notice it increases the spacing between my elements. And I could keep playing with this. I could say 64. I could say 128. I could even say like negative 32. And it will start to overlap those things, right? Sort of in like that cool like card stack. Uh, maybe you say negative 64. And you guys sort of get the idea. This is how we control spacing between elements. And guys, if this were to be applied, let me just go ahead and make that like 24 or something. Let me comment this out and go back here to my H stack. We can do the same thing on our H stack, right? So I can say spacing and I could say like 32. And as you guys might imagine, it will space those elements out from, you know, with the space in between them just like that. And once again, you know, you can increase or decrease that spacing and say even like negative 32, and it'll sort of put those things on top of each other, right? So uh, it's very rare you use negative spacing. I'm just showing you guys that for like uh, purposes of testing here. And the next thing I wanna talk about with stacks and how we can further customize them is how we can align the elements within our stack container. So you guys will notice right now that everything is really just nice and centered on our screen, right? So I want us to go ahead and let's maybe add one more rectangle here and let's adjust the height of each one. We're gonna create something that sort of simulates a bar graph here. So let's maybe make this guy purple. And let's go ahead and change the height of each one, guys. So let's make the height like 400, 200, and 100, right? So you guys notice that if I look at the overall frame of my stack, everything is sort of centered on the vertical uh, axis, right? So what if I wanted to shove all these things down to the bottom? How would I do that? How would I align my stack components to the bottom edge? 
So with an H stack and with both H stacks, V stacks and Z stacks, we have an alignment property that we can add to the constructor of the stack. So go ahead and add this alignment guy right here and add a comma um, before spacing and make sure you guys add this alignment property before spacing and go ahead and say dot bottom. And you guys will notice that it moves everything to the bottom edge of the frame here, right? And something really cool about Swift UI, guys, is that you guys will notice that this frame is automatically or implicitly defined for us based on the height of the elements or the size of the elements within the container. So we don't have to specifically define a frame for this. We can if we want, but if we don't, Swift UI automatically figures out that frame for us, as you guys can see here with this box, right? This represents my H stack here. And now I've moved everything to the bottom edge. So guys, H stacks have this vertical alignment property and we can also align it to the top. Um, but you guys will notice that our alignment has to be a vertical alignment in an H stack. So I can't move everything over to the right or the left because it's defined as a horizontal stack. And with a V stack, sort of the opposite of that is that with a V stack, we can only align things on a horizontal axis or horizontal alignment, which we'll see in a second. So let me uh, take that back to bottom, keep our bar graph there looking pretty cool. And uh, let me comment this out and comment this VStack guy back in. And let's maybe expand the width of this guy right here. Make it like 400 or like, let's do like 360 maybe. So we have some spacing on the edge. So guys, now let's go ahead and highlight that VStack and see what our frame looks like, right? So this is the frame of our VStack. So you guys will notice that I can't align things to the top or bottom, right? Because a VStack has different alignment properties and it's already vertically stacked, right? So it wouldn't make sense for me to say, hey, align this to the bottom or the top. It's a vertically stacked uh, like uh, sequence of view components here. So that wouldn't make sense. So now what we can do is add our alignment and you guys will notice we have a different set of alignment properties. We can say like dot leading and that will move that over to the leading edge. We can also have dot trailing and that will move it over to the trailing edge. And then we also have maybe center, but it defaults to center. So you almost never have to specify that. So um, that's just uh, a tip for alignment guys. And Z stack has alignment properties as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So let's go ahead and comment this back in. And guys, we can say on our Z stack, you notice that on the Z stack, we can align on any axis. You guys see here that we're not limited to a vertical or horizontal alignment, right? And that's because of the nature of V stacks. And for example, I can say dot top leading and it'll move everything to the top leading edge. Or I could say bottom leading and it'll move it all there, bottom trailing, I think you guys get the idea, right? And uh, that's just you know how we can apply some different alignment properties to a Z stack. The next thing I want us to cover before we end this video and move on to part two of our stacks, guys, where we're gonna be actually building out like um, sort of a user interface that's very similar to this. We're gonna be building out like an interface like this using stacks in the next video. I want us to go over how we can nest stacks within each other. So. Let me comment this out really quickly. And let's go back up to our H stack and comment it back in. Let's imagine that we wanted to add like a label to each one of these like bars here, right? So what I can do is within my H stack, right? So I want some text showing up beneath each thing. So if I want it showing up beneath each one of these bars, I know that that has to be a vertical stack, right? So what I can do is place each one of these rectangles inside of its own vertical stack. So let's go ahead and do that. Cut V stack, cut V stack and paste. And then I can add text, right? Let's see here, like let's do uh, revenue or something. And then we can copy and paste this text, revenue, text, and then maybe this could be profit, 
And then, you know, maybe this could be, I don't know, margins, something like that, right? This is really just to show you guys how we can nest stacks. So what is going on here? We have this overall container where everything is horizontally stacked. But within that, each one of the, the components within the stack is a vertical stack where we have a bar and a text component, bar and a text component, bar and a text component, right? So I know that can be slightly confusing, um, and especially if you're new to Swift UI, but the more practice you get with building out user interfaces and just playing around with this stuff on your own, guys, it really becomes second nature. And we're gonna get a ton, and I mean a ton of practice with building user interfaces in this bootcamp. So if that's confusing to you right now, don't worry. Uh, we're just gonna do a couple more examples of how we can nest stacks with our other example, with our other uh, stacks, our B stack and our Z stack. So let me comment that out and let's go up here. Guys, and let's imagine that we wanted to place text inside of this guy, right? So let's imagine we wanna keep this vertical layout right here, right, as the sort of parent container. And then we wanna place something like right here maybe um, in the center of that. So we want this to be a Z stack and this to be a Z stack because we wanna place things on top of each other, right? So what I can do is go ahead and wrap this rectangle in a Z stack. And then I could say text, hello world and then i can say dot foreground color of dot white dot font maybe dot headline right and that's sort of like what a button would look like maybe and we could change the height to say like 50 and you guys notice that that is like exactly how a button might look in like a real life application right um and then we could do the same thing for this guy here rectangle but let's imagine we just wanted to place something maybe next to the rectangle. So let's maybe wrap this in an H stack. And maybe create another rectangle. And you guys will notice that looks super ugly. Maybe let's make it like uh, green. And let's do 100 by 100 and then 200 by 100. So this is all still within a vertical stack, guys. Um, but we can see here that we now have a Z stack inside of that and an H stack inside of that as well. So overall, we have things stocked on top of each other, but then within that, we have nested stacks. So um, make sure you guys take some time to try to wrap your head around that and maybe try to get some practice of your own by playing around with it a little bit. Um, but that's just an introduction to stacks really quickly, guys. And in the next video, we're gonna get some more practice by building out a user interface that looks really similar to this. So we're gonna build like out each one of these cells and uh, it's not gonna have the following button or anything, but we are gonna have these images and uh, you know the username and name of the person and then these dividers as well. So that's what we're gonna be building out as a challenge in the next video to finish up our stacks module before we move on to the next thing. So get excited for that. We will see you there. Peace.